when we were driving on the road, the little mud flap fender flew off. It was loose because I kicked it off when I got stuck in the snow. And I should have put a new plastic tab in the side, the fender well, but I didn't. So that came loose, it blew off, the fender liner started flapping around and that's where I had my underglow wire tucked in. So the underglow wire came out, started flapping on the side of the car and the wire got ripped out. I'm gonna pull it in and around real quick and see if the underglow is sellable. The three 20 inches on this side and then the other 60 inch on that side. So I just cut and spliced the strips together. Uh, mount this underneath the car. Then we'll go to the other side of the car and mount up the passenger side. Let's see if I have half an underglow set or blow a fuse. Today we're going to install some underglow under the Honda Fit. Got some LED light strips. Hopefully it'll illuminate the campsite. We're going to wire it up to my solar panel battery so we could keep it on all night long without killing the car battery. So if you're watching this video trying to figure out how to hook it up to your car battery, this video is not for you. But if you want to stick around and see how I attach it to the underneath of my car, that might be worth it to you. I was just under the car for the last 20 minutes trying to figure out what to attach this to and to make it look clean. I don't want to zip tie it to a bunch of stuff under the car. I don't want to attach it to the front or rear bumper in case I have to take it off and work on the car later. Then I'd have to take off the neon lights or LED strips. So I'm already feeling a little overwhelmed. So I'm just going to look around the car for a while and figure out how I'm going to do this. My other thing, so this would attach to the rear one and then I have this long cord that needs to bypass the rear wheel and then go to the side skirt. Should be interesting. For now, I'm just gonna run the power cord through the rear bumper, the side vent, and then attach it to my solar batteries. So behind the panel, there's a rear vent in your car. I'm going to drop a string down the hole, tie the power cable from the LED strip to it, and then pull it up through here, and then I'll attach it to my solar battery. All right, so what I just did was reached up under the bunker and through the back corner, because I didn't want to take the wheel or the bumper off. I'm sure I will later. And then the cord went through. I'll tape these two ends together. All right. Works like a charm. Now I get all this. Now that the power cables ran through, I just have it hooked up to a spare battery for now. I'll worry about wiring that up later. Right now, I think I'm gonna jack up the rear end of the car and try to wire the rear bumper lights. So here's the LED cable coming down. This is the Bluetooth receiver. I think I'm gonna cover that up just so it doesn't get wet. I'm sure it's waterproof, but might as well do some extra protection. I'm gonna hide this behind the push-in clip, have it pop out here, centered, zip tie the LED strip along the back side as close as possible. And then I'm gonna have the long cables go back up through the vent so I can bypass the rear tire because there's no plastic trim to hide the wire in. And then I'll probably drill one hole her side and pop out down here to run along the side skirt and then when I get to the front tire I do have some plastic interior trim to work with and then pop out on the front bumper
Looks pretty good. If you squat down low enough, you can kind of still see the light strip. Don't mind me, I just hit the garage. There really wasn't much else to mount it to. There's the spare tire area, but that's only about two and a half feet long. And then I still had a foot of light strip on each side left over. Right now I'm gonna wire up the inside. I got the car lifted up on the driver's side. I'm gonna remove this paneling and run the driver's side LED strip along the back. I'll do a quick time lapse of that and then I'll get to a video when I drill the hole through the bottom. My plan is to come out somewhere in the wheel well or possibly down here. I'll put a rubber grommet in and some caulk then run the LED strip on the inside of this pinch weld. That way you won't see it from the side, kind of like we did with the back bumper. And I could probably also zip tie it to this plastic diffuser along the bottom. So basically I still have the power cable. It goes into the vent where it splits into two right behind the bumper. And then the light strips go left and right. It comes up through the vent hole on the driver's side, and it also comes up through the vent hole on the passenger side. All right, I'm gonna run the cable right about here. It should come out underneath the plastic diffuser, underneath the bottom. I'm going to probably cut this rubber grommet, stick the wire through, put the rubber grommet in, run the cable through the grommet and place the grommet in the hole. And if there's a little bit showing, I'll probably cook, put some caulk in there. Here's where I drilled my hole. I'm gonna touch that up with some paint to help prevent rust. Put this rubber grommet in there too so it doesn't cut the wire. And then if we come down, you can see we came out under the plastic anyway. So I put the grommet in around the wire, sealed it up with some rust sealer almost like a tar-like substance. So when it dries, no air or water is coming through the hole. Kind of cleaned up my wiring back here. So I gotta run a few more things. Come down here, put the first zip tie in, just to hold it in place. This looks so much cleaner than the rear bumper. While that's drying, I'm gonna string up this light strip. So I'll see you in a few. So I secured it about halfway through and then I realized I had like an extra six inches of LED strip because I didn't extend it all the way. So I had to clip all the zip ties and unglue it and then scoot it back six inches. So now it's pretty centered all the way across. I'm gonna wire up the other side and then probably do the wiring to the front bumper tomorrow. I just finished installing the driver's side LED light strip. The exhaust was on this side, so I had to do it a little bit differently. Instead of using the zip ties on the plastic diffuser underneath, I used the, the sticky backing that came on the light strip. I also used some Gorilla Glue extra strength along the back side. That's drying right now. So now I'm gonna run the wires around the wheel wells on the front tires.
So I just finished hiding the wire behind the trim in the wheel well. I'm still gonna leave the tire off to finish this up. This is the end of the LED strip I'm gonna put on the front bumper. Figure out how much wire I have to work with. Zip tie this up and hide it in the front bumper. That way if I have to detach my front bumper, I could always unclip this and I got two or three feet to work with here. A little tight spot here. I'm going to take the wheel off, wire up the passenger side, and then finish up the front bumper. And then I'm going to move to the inside of the car and start working on the wire. just cleaned up the wiring. We got a LED strip wire, a CB wire, and a power wire for the LED strips. These are the two solar cables. And then down here are two USB cables running from the solar box going to the dash cam. And I just ran it under the carpet. I took off the center console just a little bit. Ran it under the carpet, popped it out in the back. Here we got our power cables, and now I'm gonna run it to the fuse panel in the solar box, and then at least put the back side panels in. I'm still gonna leave the front panels off up front so I can still wire the switch in. What I'm trying to determine now is if I want one half of the switchboard to run on solar and the other half of the switchboard to run on the car battery. But I'll worry about that later. Let me just wire this up put the panels back in and get everything clean and then we'll focus on the switch up front. So I had the LED strips on for about two weeks now. They're working pretty good. I want to fix two things. Obviously how this strip is exposed. You can see it at night if you're far enough back from the car. So I'm going to try and attach it to spare tire trunk area. And then I guess it's going to go high up and above the exhaust. Probably won't see it as good by the tailpipe but it's better than actually seeing it it doesn't look clean the rest of the car is tucked away quite nice and just one other thing no this hide that wire a little bit
here. I lost part of my fender liner. Um, I had a underglow neon cord tucked in here. It came out and it got ripped off. So I'm missing an underglow, I believe, under the front of the car. I'm gonna pull it in and around real quick and see if the underglow is salvageable in the corner. Um, one wire ripped, so I'm not sure if it's one solid power wire or if there's a power wire and a data cable to make it do all the crazy light stuff. So, fender came off, the fender liner I guess was shaken, the underglow wire that I had tucked in here fell out and dangled and ripped the passenger side underglow strip off and we are left with this so i'm gonna strip and tape these off and see if the left half or the driver's side of the car works all right let's see if i have half an underglow set or blow a fuse We got the back, we got the side, and I should have half a front. 7,300 mile review right there. The passenger front bumper light is still attached. It's just not illuminated because it's not attached to anything. I could probably center out the driver's side light because it does come in two strips to even that out. The driver's side side skirt is still fine. And the rear bumper light strips are also still fine. Obviously they're replacing the rear bumper because it got punctured here and it hit hard enough where I'm sure the rear support frame got bent in. Oh! One of my biggest complaints about the underglow strip is that there's no disconnect points and it's all one solid wire or one solid strip. So right now, my complaint about that is if you attached it to the rear bumper or if you attached it to the front bumper and you got in an accident or somebody rear-ended you like me, it's got to go to the body shop and they have to replace the rear bumper and that's where the light strip is attached. So it would be nice if I could just, you know, disconnect it here and then disconnect it on the other side of the rear bumper. You know, they can remove the bumper and I don't have to take the whole underglow strip off at once because it's connected all together. So I'm gonna take this off. Maybe I'll cut and solder some wires together and see if I could salvage it. Oh boy, removing the underglow strip took a lot longer than anticipated and plus I had to remove a lot more stuff in the trunk than I wanted to or than I planned on. So I don't know how long that time lapse took. It definitely killed the battery. All right, we're gonna try to save the underglow strip. I had it run from the bumper and then there was two short strips. Then it came around. And then a 60 inch strip on this side, a 60 inch strip on this side, and then it came to the front bumper and we had two more small strips. So what happened was on the passenger side, this came loose, got wrapped around the tire and ripped this underglow off. So we don't have this one anymore. And then this one was damaged enough where I couldn't salvage it. 
So we got two 20 inches, no, three, one at the bumper, and then one 60 inch light. What I wanted to do is have a 20 inch, a 20 inch, the third 20 inch up in the front. 20 inches is definitely long enough and bright enough to illuminate the whole front bumper. And then put the 60 inch one on the side. I don't know how that's gonna look, so I might do the three 20 inches on this side and then the other 60 inch on that side and just have side underglow. I just cut and spliced the strips together and used some heat shrink tubing. I probably could have made this a little shorter, but I didn't want to make the wires too short. And then if I had to come back and redo my connection because it wasn't good enough, it would have been almost impossible to get the wires soldered and crimped together. So I'm gonna mount this underneath the car. Then we'll go to the other side of the car and mount up the passenger side. As you see, I was able to salvage the underglow strips. I got one 60 inch on one side, and then I got three out of four 20 inches tied together on the other side. I could have done two 20 inches on the side and then tried to do the third one in the grill, but I was afraid that there was gonna be a big enough gap between them where there would be a dead spot on the ground. Here, there's only like a three inch dead spot between the three lights and you can't even tell. So the price for these wasn't too bad. It was $75 and for what they can do, I think that's a pretty good price. Back about 10 years ago, we paid about $200 for one neon kit that could only do one color. The small complaints I have is I think that the app is really lacking in features. So the first seven settings are going to rotate through the solid colors at the bottom. After that, it's going to rotate through the colors again, but in a different mode, like pulsing, on and off. Then you're going to get to the next seven, and again you're going to rotate through the colors with twinkling. Eventually you'll get to multiple colors chasing or twinkling together, but they're kind of set at random. I think it would be best to have a mode selection on the top, pulse, fade, twinkle, etc. And then select one or more colors that you want it to cycle through at the bottom. One of the last features I wish this app included, maybe another light set has it. If you know of one, let me know down below. I wish you could select the light strip and then select what mode or color you'd want it to be. So for example, if I wanted my side skirt screen and then the front and back bumpers red. I know it's probably something most people don't want, but it's something that I'm trying to find. If you know of one, let me know. For 7,000 plus miles, I think they held up pretty well. The only thing that happened to them was my own fault. And once again, I just wish that they had a quick disconnect between every light strip. So if you needed to take off the front bumper, just disconnect, disconnect, and rip off the front bumper with the light strip intact. 